What's happening, YouTube? Jonathan Pariente, The Education 10 here, coming at you guys with another video. I want to ask you guys to please continue to check and subscribe to my channel for more YouTube videos. And this is my very first video of 2021. I want to wish everybody a very happy new year. And we're going to kick it off with a bang. Wild Card Weekend. We're on the eve of it. 14 teams are going to get a shot to possibly take home the Vince Lombardi Trophy. One only will do it. Every team that's here, I think for me, earned their spot. You don't really have a team that didn't deserve to be here, in my opinion. So let's go ahead. Let's dive right into the Saturday games first for the wild card. The playoffs are a little different than normal for this year, and it's going to be for go going forward. Only now the one seeds get a first round bye. And you add in another team on the AFC and NFC that could make the playoffs. So seven teams get in. A little different than normal. It used to be 12. Now it's going to be 14. Kansas City Chiefs got the first round bye for the AFC. Green Bay Packers got the bye for the NFC. So let's dive into the first matchup, which is going to be the leadoff game on Saturday at 1 o'clock, and that is the Indianapolis Colts and the Buffalo Bills. Really interesting matchup. Josh Allen, Phillip Rivers, the future versus kind of right at the end end of his career in Rivers, in my in my opinion. This is going to be an interesting match. You have Stefan Diggs on one side. You have Gabriel Davis, John Brown. You have a lot of playmakers for Buffalo. They've done, they, they've done a really just incredible job. First time Buffalo is hosting a playoff game at home in well over 25 years. That's pretty big. For Indy, Phillip Rivers has found a home here. One of the best teams I think he's had assembled in a long time. Jonathan Taylor having a great year. One of the best running backs the Colts have had. And he really is putting himself on the map in his first season. T.Y. Hilton starting to pick up his game. The defense of the Colts very equal to that of Buffalo. Only problem with the Colts is penalties. And they seem to shoot themselves in the foot with a lot of them. Otherwise, they would not be 10-6. and six. Maybe they would have won the AFC South. But that's for another day. But only one wins this. I think this will be a very close game. Both teams are going to go right to the finish here. But for me, I think Buffalo, with by the way, with fans... At Orchard Park, it's going to be small, but fans will be allowed in Buffalo. I say the Bills win this game. It'll be a close game. 34-31. As Josh Allen will get over that hump from, he, from what he couldn't do last year, and he'll have a win in the playoffs. Let's go to our next matchup. The midday game at 4 in the afternoon. That is the Rams and the Seahawks. Very interesting this is going to be as well. The Rams, you don't know about Jared Goff. He may not even play. Which means the Rams would have to go with their backup in John Walford, who literally played in his very first NFL game in Week 17, in a game the Rams ended up winning, which they had to, to get into the playoffs. But you're playing Russell Wilson. You're playing in Seattle. Chris Carson is healthy. DK Metcalf. Tyler Lockett. A lot of depth the Seahawks have, and their defense has played much better over the last number of weeks. The Rams have a solid D of their own, no doubt. Aaron Donald leading the way. Yes, you have Cooper Cup. You have Robert Woods. You have Cam Akers. You have, you have playmakers there. Sean McVay, credible coach. But without Jared Goff, I just do not like the Rams' chances. Goff plays, 
the Rams have a chance. But no golf, this is advantage, Seahawks. And unless something crazy happens, I think the Seahawks win this game. And I think they'll win it handedly. Seahawks 24, Rams 6. Now we go to the 8-15 game, the prime time game. Interest, this is going to be an exciting one. Well, yeah, I think it'll be an exciting one. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Washington football team. Tell you, Washington was a very interesting story. 7-9, and nine, and they won the NFC East, and they're hosting a playoff game. You know the last team was that had a record like that, that hosted a playoff game? Seattle in 2010. And they beat New Orleans in that first round, so... Could we see an upset similar to that? We might. But Alex Smith has been hurt. He came back before that which was tremendous that he even is on a football field. But a calf injury, and you have a backup in Taylor Heineke, you've already released Dwayne Haskins for the right reasons. And yeah, you have Antonio Gibson, a good running back. You got Terry McLaurin, solid. You got Chase Young, who I think is going to be the future anchor of that defense. But you're playing Tom Brady. Yeah, they're down Mike Evans. I get it. But Antonio Brown, Chris Godwin, Rob Gronkowski, Ronald Jones, Leonard Fournette. Brady still has enough weaponry at his disposal that he can just throw the ball to. And unless Washington plays a great defensive battle with Brady, this is advantage Tampa Bay. And I think even being the road team, Tampa Bay wins this game pretty, pretty easily. Tampa Bay will win 30 to 13. Now we go to the Sunday games. And this should be quite exciting. We lead off with Titans Ravens. This is going to be one heck of a rematch. Remember now the Titans eliminated Baltimore to get to the AFC Championship game last year. Still very much the same teams that we saw last year. Lamar Jackson, Ryan Tannehill, Derrick Henry. The Ravens have a great running game. Not just Lamar Jackson. The rookie J.K. Dobbins has been tremendous. Gus Edwards. You have Mark Andrews if Jackson can throw the ball to him. Marquise Brown. You have Snead. The Ravens still have a very punishing defense. We've always known that to be the case when you play for John Harbaugh. But the Titans have a one-man wrecking crew in Derrick Henry. And no matter how many people you put, Henry can just plow right through them. Ryan Tannehill doesn't have to throw the ball deep if he doesn't need to. He didn't have to most for the most part in the playoffs. But I think he will need to do a little bit of that this go-around. You have A.J. Brown, great deep threat. You have Jonu Smith, you have Ferkser, you have, of course, Henry. You have enough guys that Tannehill could go to. You have Corey Davis, I didn't even mention him. You have enough weapons that Tannehill can go to at any given time. But how this will work, you're going to have to be ahead if you're the Tennessee Titans. Lamar has struggled when his team is behind. And I think if the Titans can dictate the game early, the Titans will win this game. It will be close, no doubt in my mind. Titans are going to win this game for me. 27-23, Tennessee. We go to our 4 o'clock game. And it's going to be the very first one ever broadcast on Nickelodeon. Had the pleasure to interview Noah Eagle to preview that game. Uh, if you ever want to listen to it, it's I'll provide a link in the description below. It'll be via Anchor.fm. Episode is called Off With a Bang, Part 1. 
Saints and the Bears is going to be the Nickelodeon game. Very interesting. It's like a David versus Goliath battle, if you will. Drew Brees didn't know if he was going to come back after having multiple rib fractures and a collapsed lung. You weren't even sure if he was going to come back. Alvin Kamara will be back for this game following a week off from COVID. Michael Thomas have Jared Cook. The Saints have Taysom Hill. They have so many weapons they can use at their disposal. On the side of the Bears, you have Mitchell Trubisky. He's picked it up of late, but he's going to have to do more than just picking it up if he's going to beat Drew Brees. He will have to play his absolute best. David Montgomery, he will have to dictate some of the action. Solid running back that he is, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield. You have Allen Robinson, solid deep threat. You have Darnell Mooney, young rookie. You have Jimmy Graham. You have Cole Komet. So the Bears have something, but can Mitchell Trubisky get the ball to them? Can the Bears stay in tune with New Orleans? That can be usually the hardest thing. When New Orleans gets going, they don't look back. And the Bears are going to have to be staying with them every step of the way to even have a chance. And I'm not sure that they will. This game's in New Orleans. This benefits the Saints tremendously, even with fans or no. New Orleans is a very hard place to play. I predict New Orleans wins this game. And they'll win it pretty easy. 34-7. New Orleans. Finally, the 8-15 game on Sunday. The Browns and the Steelers. The Browns their first playoff in 18 years. A lot of things have changed over those years. The Browns have a young man, Baker Mayfield, at the helm, who's taken Cleveland by storm, and not just with his commercials. Again, a night, like a changing of the guard game. Baker Mayfield, one of the future quarterbacks in the league, against Big Ben. The Browns have tremendous talent. Two solid running backs, Kareem Hunt and Nick Chubb. Rams were fourth in the league in rushing. Solid offensive weaponry. Even if you minus Odell Beckham, you have Jarvis Landry, you have Najoku, you have Hooper. It's a very nice group of talent that Baker, when he has time, can get the ball to them. For the Steelers, you have Big Ben. You got Chase Claypool, the young, talented rookie. You have Juju Smith-Schuster. You got James Conner. The running game has been an issue for Pittsburgh. And Big Ben is going to have to do a lot more than just gunslinging the ball if the Steelers will win. You have a lot of punch. Now, can the Steelers deliver that punch in a big playoff game? They had struggled in their last four games. And I'm curious how Big Ben will come out. I will say this, this is a big moment if you're the Browns for Baker Mayfield. He has struggled against the AFC North. Yeah, you beat Pittsburgh in the last week, but that was only because Big Ben was not there. Steelers didn't really have all their players playing in that game. Now they're at full power. And this is where Baker has to prove himself. And you're playing in Heinz Field. And unless the Browns can scare the Steelers early, which is going to be very tough to do with that defense of theirs... I'd say it's advantage Pittsburgh. I think the Steelers will come out. They always have been known to come out big in playoff games like this. And I think they will do so again. Steelers will win 24-10. to We're just beginning the road to the Super Bowl. And it begins with Wild Card Weekend. We might see some surprises along the way. The winners will go on to play in the divisional playoff the following week when the Chiefs and the Packers join the fray. Good luck. John Perriente, The Education 10, saying bye for now.